Okay, so let's take a look now at task number three, the synthesis task. Um, my general advice for doing this is don't leave it right until the end. Don't just think, oh, it's short, it's small, it's a gap fill. I can do this in like five minutes because um, you really can't. You've got to have um, quite a good understanding of text A and text B to be able to do this. Um, so, um, you might find that some of the t um, answers here are in the first text, some are in the second, and it might be mixed up. You might not be able to just say, okay, I'll go to the start of text A, do questions 1, 2, 3, then I'll go to text B, and then do 4, 5, and 6. Uh, it probably isn't going to be like that. Okay, but there will be clues. I mean, okay, so your example here is the East Indies, okay, and you've got the word Dutch, so that's obviously from the text about the Dutch Empire. Okay, and then we've got the Belgians here, so the 1880s. So we know from the sort of time period and the word Belgian that this is going to be from the text about the Belgian Empire. Okay, so what I like to do with this is to look at the gap and try to phrase this information as a question. So here um, my question would be, um, which huge domain in Central Africa um, was recognized in the 1880s? Okay, so which huge domain in Central Africa was recognized in the 1880s? All right, so let's go down to the text and see if we can find that. Okay, so it's there. Okay. Recognized 1880s. Enormous, that means huge. Domain. Okay, so the Congo Free State is your answer. So trying to phrase it like the question gives you the focus to sort of find each of these pieces of information. Which huge domain in, the, in Central Africa was recognized in the 1880s? The Congo Free State. Okay, let's go and have a look at question two. All right, we've got a big clue here. The Dutch Empire. All right, early years of the 1600s, and they engaged in something against the native populations. Okay, so what kind of question could this be? Um, here's a question. What kind of action did the Dutch Empire engage in in the early 1600s against the native populations? Okay, let's go down, take a look. Okay, so here's our answer. Okay, natives, use of force. Okay, what years? Okay, so look early 1600s. Actually it goes up to the middle of the century, but okay. This can help us. So what kind of actions did the Dutch engage in against the natives in the early 1600s? Military actions. Okay, question three. Now you can see this is in a separate paragraph. Okay, we've got the Dutch, the Dutch, the Dutch. So um, we can think here, okay, all of these questions are going to come from that text. They're all about the Dutch Empire. Okay, it would be a very strange paragraph if it started with the Dutch, talked about the Belgians, and then talked about the Dutch again. So let's think of it like that. So they're all going to come from the same text, these questions. All right, okay, so the situation came to an end. What situation? Because of something in the early 1940s. So what situation came to an end in the early 1940s and why? Okay, because of, so why did this happen? 
All right, so let's go and take a look. Okay, so we've got the early 1940s. Conditions changed drastically. Okay, and it became Indonesia. All right, so the Japanese Asian invasion, this is why. Okay, number four. Okay, the Dutch Empire was not restricted to Asia, however. Now we know Asia is a continent, part of the world, and it wasn't restricted to this, which means the Dutch Empire was not only in this place, it was in other places as well. So where? Okay, where did the Dutch also found a settlement? All right, now we've got a clue here, the Amazon and Orinoco. Do we know where the Amazon is? Well, I think it's in South America, but I think I'll check the text anyway. Okay, and so we've also got this time marker, the 1600s. All right, okay, so this is a very specific area, so we just need to find the name of the place. Okay, there we go, that's a big clue. We've got the years, okay, 1600s, okay. And this is the one, okay. Okay, and this sentence explains where Guyana is. Okay, so we started off with a paragraph about Dutch and Belgian empires. Then we focused on the Dutch. Okay, so now it would make sense because this is a separate paragraph. And then we see Belgium. So these two examples are probably from the text about the Belgian empire. Okay, so how can we turn this into a question? Okay, late 19th, early 20th century, so that's the 1890s and this is 1900 all right so these time markers can give us a clue a boom means um, a boom in trade means trade increased very quickly there was a rapid increase in trade um, so a boom in the trade of what product in the late 19th and early 20th century So, 1887, 1901, there are our time markers. Okay, a steep takeoff. This has a similar meaning to rapid increase or boom. Okay, and we can see the word boom there again. So, our product is rubber. So, that's the answer. And finally, number six. All right, the start of the 1900s. Belgium was the major trade partner. Okay, another time marker here, the Second World War. Increasing amount of trade was conducted with which country? So, although Belgium was the major trade partner in the early 1900s, which country did the Congolese area trade with at the Second World War? During and after World War II, there we go, the United States. Okay, Congo's second trade partner. Okay, so think about what the gaps are asking for, okay? And try to turn the information into a question. This can help you to locate the, the answer. And look at the time periods and look at um, the details to try and help you locate the, prop, the correct information. And you should be okay. All right, good luck.